Rigathi Gachagua is very bitter, very angry and disappointed. And because Rigathi Gachagua is bitter, angry and disappointed, he has decided to step down from UDA's national politics and Rigathi Gachagua is now going to concentrate on his parliamentary seat. And on this platform, I've always stated and reminded everybody that in politics, nothing happens out of mere coincidence. That everything in politics is normally well planned, well scripted, and executed to achieve a specific political objective. Yesterday, many people on this platform drew my attention to a statement which was allegedly issued by UDS party. In that statement, they shared a list of uh, politicians who are going to get or who are going to get direct nomination. I just want to try and uh, check that list because I have it here. And most people shared that list with me for one main reason. Rigathi Gashagwa's name, so the letter says, on February, on uh, 26th, February 2022, our party leader William Ruto vouched for consensus and dialogue between aspirants vying for the same position to avoid confusion during UDA primaries. That's something which the deputy president has been saying. This, I, I hope you guys, I did, because I don't want to have a lot of time, I don't have a, a lot of time, I'm a bit late today. Most of you, I think you saw this letter. I, I have it on my Facebook, you can check it. So in this letter, there were several people who are going to get direct nominations. Like there is the Nyeri governor, the senator for Nyeri going to be Wahome, Wamatinga, the women for Nyeri, Rehab Mukami, Susan Keika in Nakuru is going to get direct ticket for governor. Then there's John Kagushia Mkurueni. Then in Joro, there is that charity. Then there's Vita Karanja in Nakuru, Senate. Dindi Nyoro, Rigadi Gashagwa going to get Madeira. There are several other people. But Alice Wahome's name was not here. And that's what drew the attention of most people and forced them to send it to me. And today, Rigedi Gashagwa wrote a statement on his Facebook page that, uh, that uh, I have officially left my former party jubilee and joined the party of the future UDA. I have paid the official fee to defend the Madeira parliamentary seat on UDA ticket. I invite all those who wish to unseat me to join UDA before tomorrow's deadline and face me in party nomination as they have no chance being in any party associated with Azimio. Now, that's Rigadi Gashagwa. But that's not important. <laughs> the most important thing here is why Rigadi Gashagwa has finally decided to go back to defend his seat. For those who've been following William Ruto's politics, Rigadi Gashagwa actually emerged from nowhere and ousted Moses Kuria, ousted uh, the, the, the former cabinet secretary for agriculture, Mwangi Kiunjuri, ousted uh, Anwai Guru, and emerged as the favorite running mate. And when UDA party merged with, uh, I mean, when UDA party joined hands with the Ford Kenya and ANC party, when they went to the ground down there, William Ruto was in the same vehicle with the Rigadi Gashagwa. And personally, I concluded that the idea behind that was to sell Rigadi Gashagwa as William Ruto's designated running mate. But a lot of things have been changing. I've been going through certain posts, especially by people who are close with the deputy president. There's a lady, a good friend of mine, called um, Kiki, Charity Kiki. This lady has always insisted that the running mate is definitely going to be Alice Wahome. And just the other day, Riyadi Gashago made some statement on uh, Citizen TV alleging that the position of the running mate is a preserve for the people of the larger Mount Kenya region. That statement by Riyadi Gashagwa caused a huge storm in UDA party and Kenya Kwanzaa Alliance. And from that moment, we saw Rigadi Gashagwa starting to take a low profile. He was left out from the 
US trip. And many people, like for, for me, I thought maybe because of corruption and the rest, these guys didn't want to carry him. But Rigadi Gashagwa, in my view, has now decided that enough is enough. So in this video today, I want to give you the reasons why Rigadi Gashagwa has finally decided to, to, to step down from national politics and concentrate at the constituency politics. Because remember, William Ruto actually appealed to the residents of Madeira to allow, to allow Rigadi Gashagwa go up outside there and help him campaign at the national level. He has been doing that to a few leaders, like in uh, Taraka Nidhi, he's doing that to Kithure Kindiki. And for those who have been following Kithure Kindiki's politics, he's now concentrating more on the national politics. And as a matter of fact, he's not even defending his seat at the Senate, as a senator. So why is Rigadi Gashagwa allowed to defend his seat while he's supposed to be helping the deputy president at the national level? That's something which Rigadi Gashagwa knows himself. But the truth of the matter is that Rigadi Gashagwa has finally decided to step down because of the following reasons. Number one is the earthquake effect. Before Musalia Mudavadi and Wetangula joined William Ruto to form Kenya Kwanza, there was space around the deputy president. There was a good space. And Rigadi Gashagwa actually occupied the space. When these guys came, Rigadi Gashagwa was pushed very far to an extent that even as the deputy president and Mudavadi are away, the person who is now taking charge is Moses Wetangula. And Rigadi Gashagwa is not happy about that. So these guys came. Rigadi Gashagwa <coughs> has done the donkey work for the deputy president. Now, two gentlemen are coming <coughs> at the last minute and now they are taking and occupying that space. As a matter of fact, the attention of this country is now focused on Mudavadi, Wetangula, and Ruto. Rigadi Gashagwa is nowhere. So the earthquake effect which Musalia Mudavadi announced to us is actually affecting Rigadi Gashagwa. That's number one. Number two is the running mate equation. I think Rigadi Gashagwa has realized that he cannot be a running mate. And I think also internally, within UDA, there's a consensus that Rigadi Gashagwa and his character cannot be running mate to the deputy president. As much as that running mate can come from the larger Mount Kenya region, Rigadi Gashago cannot be that person. And probably he has been told that he cannot be a running mate. So why is Alice Wahome's name missing in that list? So probably Alice Wahome is being prepared to take over. Alice Wahome is being prepared <clears throat> to become the next running mate. If that running mate has to come from the larger Mount Kenya region. Or probably Kituri Kindiki. Or I tend to think that the issue of the running mate is a very emotive issue in Kenya Kwanza as we speak now because of the emergence of Musalia Mdavadi. If I may ask you, do you think Rigadi Gashagwa leaving Ruto now and Musalia Mdavadi leaving Ruto now, who will have the greatest impact? So the truth of the matter is that as things stand today, William Ruto believes that those who are going to vote for him from the larger Mount Kenya region have already decided. So whether they, you do what, they have already decided. Whether Rigadi Gashagwa will be the running mate, whether the running mate will, get for, will come from some other place. So I tend to think that the deputy president is now deciding that the running mate might actually come from the larger Western Kenya because of the way he has worked very closely now with the Muslim Davadi. So and that's what is now pushing Rigadi Gashagwa away. That the possibility of him being a running mate is now very remote. So that's number two. Number three is the US trip. Now, how many people went with the deputy president to the United States of America? 31. So do you want to tell me that out of these 31 people, you couldn't get space for Rigadi Gashagwa? Is it possible that Rigadi Gashagwa's name was submitted, but he could not get a visa? Or what's really happening? That's a question. And as a human being, Rigadi Gashagwa is justified to be, happy, to be angry that he was left out from the fact that now who is who in UDA went to United States of America. In uh, Kikuyu Nation, who went? Susan Kehika. Why? Probably because Susan Kehika lived and worked there. Who else? So you can't really point out the person who ought to have gone there other than Rigadi Gashagwa. So the truth of the matter is that this trip by the Deputy President to the United States of America 
has really strained the relationship between Riyadh Gashagwa and UDA party. The only thing I know Riyadh Gashagwa cannot do, he cannot go to another political party. He will just fight within UDA party, retain his seat, and then we are likely to see a new Riyadh Gashagwa after this election. So that's number three. Number four, in my view, is credibility issues. I think Riyadh Gashagwa is also very tired now with the fact that a lot of credibility issues are being raised. And even within UDA, there are so many people who are now not comfortable with him being close to the deputy president. You know, he has that, those cases going on court. The deputy president is now trying to rebrand, appearing as a Democrat. The deputy president is trying to shed off, being associated with bad elements. But Rikadi Gashaga was the next guy next to him, always. So I think he might have been advised by his team of advisors to keep Rigadi Gashagwa away. And the only way to keep Rigadi Gashagwa away from him so that these credibility issues are not raised is by asking Rigadi Gashagwa to stay away, to concentrate in on his seat. Maybe after the elections, Rigadi Gashagwa will then be called back to, to play his rightful role. Number four, sorry, that, number five in my view is the emergence of Professor Kithiru Kindiki. You know, if you've been following William Ruto's politics, Kituri Kindiki is actually emerging. Kituri Kindiki is now emerging as a serious player in UDA politics. This is a guy the deputy president told, do not run for the Senate. He's not running. Come and play at the national level. He's playing at the national level. The truth of the matter is that when President Ruto Kenyatta and William Ruto took over in 2013, the person who they were grooming to succeed I mean, to be running mate from the larger Mount Kenya region was none other than Professor Kithure Kendiki. I don't know what really transpired that the deputy president saw it not wise to allow him continue as the majority leader at the Senate, why he had to replace him with Kipchumba Murkomen. But the truth of the matter is that Kithure Kendiki was President Rukinyata's lawyer. He was uh, incorporated in uh, UDA, I mean, in um, URP. He was playing his role. He was the designated, uh, the, the, the designated uh, running mate, but the deputy president started frustrating him. But still, he has remained loyal. So is, is there a chance that the deputy president is trying to revive the politics of Professor Kithuri Kindiki and at whose expense? The moment Professor Kithuri Kindiki is rising, the person who is going to go down is none other than Riyadh Gashago. And lastly, I think Moses Korea's factor is also at play. Moses Korea fell out with the deputy president primarily because of Riyadh Gashago. So the deputy president has entered into coalition arrangement with Musalim Davadi, Moses Wetangula. If you've been reading body language of Moses Korea, he's a man who is now willing to go and join William Ruto. Probably one of the conditions he has put is that Rigadi Gashago should not be anywhere. So the deputy president, being desperate for the support of Moses Kuria, is now deciding that based on value between Rigadi Gashago and Moses Kuria, Moses Kuria being with UDA, I mean, on the side of Kenya Kwanza, will actually add more value to William Ruto than Rigadi Gashago being around the deputy president. So I tend to think that the deputy president is courting Moses Kuria, and this is something which is not sitting well with the Riga <clears throat> I don't know what you think. That's my take. Do you love that politics? For me, that's very nice politics from Lee McQuay. So if you're watching this channel for the first time, there is no reason whatsoever why you should not subscribe. So just subscribe now so that next time you produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue. Thank you guys for your continued support. Without that support, we cannot be here. So I want to Thank you from the bottom of my heart for your continued support. Give this video a thumbs up, share it, and also drop your comments. I'm going to take uh, like uh, one hour or so just to respond to questions and comments on this particular video. Thank you guys, and please may you have a good day. Bye-bye.